Hi, Daniel at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Welcome back. Today is the short message on the Sabbath. Now, what does the Bible say about the Sabbath? In Genesis 2, I'm going to pick up with verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended the work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because uh, in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So the six-day creation week had culminated with the creation of Adam. He formed Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So the seventh day is the seal of God. And so there's a fundamental principle when you study the Bible, and it's called roots of truth. And whenever you hear something taught, which is the creation week, this is called the root of truth. And you need to be very careful when you study scriptures further on in the Bible and how does it line up with the original uh, roots of truth here. So um, this is a high Sabbath. Today is the 11th of April, 2020, and it's also a high Sabbath uh, for the Christian church and a high Sabbath for the Jewish church, okay? But I want to point out something very important here. The Sabbath was created in the beginning, in, in 2,000 years before Abraham existed, before there was ever a Jew. So the Sabbath commandment uh, in the fourth commandment is for the whole world. It's not just for the Jewish people. Many people stumble on that. So in Bible Christianity, uh, we want to look at what does the whole Bible say about a topic. And there's over 220 references to the Sabbath in the Bible, and the first day of the week, which is Sunday, and it's easy to prove the first day of the week is Sunday because yesterday was Good Friday, and on Good Friday, Jesus Christ was crucified um, for the sins of mankind, okay? The Jewish religious leaders did not recognize that he was the Messiah, but he was because he fulfilled all the prophecies that are written about him in the Bible. So I want to go into the book of Acts, which is the New Testament. And there's 28 uh, speeches that are given in the early Christian church. Um, I'll just let the Bible speak for itself. How's that? This is the early Christian church, the spread of Christianity after uh, Jesus rose from the grave, which will be tomorrow, the 12th of April, 2020, which is known in uh, most of the world as Easter Sunday. So let's pick up here in uh, Acts chapter 13, and I'm in verse 4, preaching in Cyprus. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they raised they sailed to Cyprus, and when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Okay, so there's 28 uh, sermons given in the New Testament here, messages, and I'm going to skip on over to verse 13. At Antioch in Pisidia, Pisidia, I'm sorry. Now, when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation to the people, for the people, sorry, say on. Then Paul stood up, motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, 
and you who fear God, listen, the God of this people Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he brought them out of it. Now for a time of about 40 years, he put up with their ways in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to them by allotment. And Paul goes on to preach. So they're actually in the synagogue, worshiping on the Sabbath, preaching the Christian message about the what happened in the past with the nation of Israel, how they were brought out of Egypt, and also um, how Jesus came. And so I want to go on into Acts 17 now. Turn in your Bible to... Uh, Acts 17, preaching Christ at Thessalonica, verse 1. Now when they had passed through Anapholus and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. Now, I'm also going to share with you from Acts, 7, um, Acts 13, verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, and Gentiles the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So over and over again, you're reading in the New Testament. This is uh, many, many years after Jesus had uh, resurrected from the grave. That they're begging Paul and the other brothers that are born again Christians to come and preach on the Sabbath. I, a really good resource for you is sabbathtruth.com. I don't know about you, but I need the truth. When someone showed this to me through the Bible, I was not born a Bible Christian. I was born an Episcopalian, and they're very good Christians. But their doctrine teaches a, a, a false um, doctrine according to the Bible. Okay, to them that preach Sunday is holy, that's their tradition. But it's not found in here if you study this book thoroughly. And so I made a decision instantly. I was convicted by the Holy Spirit in 2006 when I started studying with my neighbor who asked me to study. And I'm a born-again Bible Christian now. I believe that the seventh-day Sabbath is a seal of God. I believe that when Friday night comes, because in the Bible, the day begins when the sun goes down. And you can find that on uh, SabbathTruth.com also. And so when Friday night arrives, me and my wife, Patricia, we stop doing any um, work. I don't answer any business phone calls. I don't do any business emails. No, I don't sell any of the whole organic foods. Uh, I'm in the wellness, natural medicine business. We, we don't sell anything on the seventh-day Sabbath. And we worship God. Uh, normally, we would be in a church, but the COVID-19 coronavirus is going on, and we have to worship from home via technology. So you can contact me at danielparsonsministry.com and um, my email, daniel at danielparsonsministry.com. You can also study this for yourself, uh, and you can find Bible-based uh, Christian churches that honor the seventh-day Sabbath. I personally am a seventh-day Adventist Christian, but there's other uh, faith denominations that um, also honor the seventh-day Sabbath. So I don't know about you, but I want the truth in the times we're living in. And this is following the Word of God versus following traditions of man. And so, God bless you. I want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. When you go into a court of law, you have to raise your right hand and swear that you're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. God bless you, and I'll have one more video tomorrow, the Resurrection Sunday. God bless.